Oh, hello, comrade. Have you always wanted to live Slav life? Shank and Kraut, the newly acquired Lebensraum? Then do I have the game for you. In the long history of World War II games, they focus on the greater conflict of epic battle. Maybe a side mission sabotaging the thingamajig really doesn't focus on smaller groups of resistance, even more so on the Eastern Front. In Partisans 1941, you do just that. Playing as a Russian captain who escapes a POW camp, decides to continue the war through more unconventional means. Get a basic tutorial of the actions during escape sections to realize quickly that this is just commandos behind enemy lines. Unity edition with a scent of vodka instead of Yorkshire tea. Story is simple. If you know your history, in 1941, Germany invades Russia during Operation Barbarossa. Your job is to put up resistance to help Glorious Union win war. Simple, right? The game is straight faced. No quirky comedy. The ride isn't the destination from the history books, but how we get there. We gain more allies with unique skills along the way. We learn more about them in camp that fleshes them out as people. Pick up files in the missions that give lore dumps. Read newspapers between missions to hear of battles taking place. The art of the game, I really like. This weird mixture between stylized but not, oil painting but kinda not. The loading is super fast. I find myself sitting expecting a few minutes, but no, it's fairly instant. It continued to catch me off guard all the way to the end of the game. The voiceovers have Russian-speaking Russian. In German speaking German. I rather enjoy that extra bit of authenticity. It's like playing a Yakuza game with glorious Nippon voices. It feels right. The first order of business is to set up a squat shack in the middle of nowhere. Between missions, the player will build up a variety of upgrades that take place in this rather neat sped up time lapse. There's a bit of strategy here as certain missions can be taken to get items and ammo. Depending on the mission and the partisan sent, they can fail. Then you save scum them and try again only to find out the loot randomly changes each time. The other part of the camp is to keep morale buffs up with harvesting food nearby. Getting low will give debuffs. They can make the mission slightly harder. Unusable items can be looted from anything in missions that will turn into food or materials for crafting after each mission. There are also debuffs from combat injuries that can be stabilized in the field, though they can only be healed at the camp's medical facility that require one day. I never found the need to craft anything other than mod weapons for accuracy, as everyone in this game shoots like they just got a Red Rider BB gun for Christmas. Oh my god, I shot my eye out! There's a choice to go loud or quiet. Most of the time, the ideal choice is quiet. A good portion of the missions force it can really go in loud on a few shorter missions with enemies and are further limited by how much ammo you have stocked up. The ammo goes very fast and it's part of ending combat as quickly as possible. Fairly decent cover system that turns firefights into a stalemate. Flush enemies out using grenades, as even though the accuracy is a bit random, standing out in the open is guaranteed death. Mostly ends with grenade spam and mowing down anyone out of cover. The characters have a variety of unique skills and weapon proficiencies. There are some neat ideas like the kid going in disguise or the medic putting sedatives in beer bottles. It's neat ideas being the key word as it's more of a roleplay thing than actually being practical. Only one weapon being practical too. And that weapon is knife. Most of the game will be played as the captain with his insanely useful knife throw. Then enters a golden god. The Thief. We meet him gutting a germ in the woods because he needs those scouts. With his abilities to jump the walls, lure guards with whistles, I soloed the entire rest of the game maps with this mad lad. I really wanted to use the Commissar as his abilities looked cool. Unfortunately, he would get shot to hell and back at any encounter before being able to use them in real time. And eventually I could get him into a spot to make those abilities work. And well, the teamwork made the dream work. This is one of the faults with the game. Really cool ideas that just don't work. 
the action abilities either waste ridiculous amounts of ammo for a little gain or you'll get spotted before they fire off. The really ideal way through the game is to squat in bushes, notice the patterns, shank the kraut, and grow your garden. Your garden of dead crap. The enemy types are tiered on toughness. We start with simple local police who die from a strong sneeze. The Wehrmacht soldiers noticeably more resilient. Radio men can call in more squads off map. Officer can tell if a trooper is missing and start alert. Then Waffen SS that can take multiple body shots. There are dogs. Remember the dogs from Red Alert? Yeah, if you see those dogs rushing at you, you take that pupper out ASAP. A well-placed mine or grenade will rip in pepperoni them. There are nice touches like being able to turn off lights to reduce sight. Game lets you know when bodies and characters are fully hidden in bushes. The ability to hide bodies in lockers or dumpsters. It tries to spice up the stealth with environmental deaths. Releasing brakes on a truck or letting logs roll three. Can throw stones or leave sus bottles out in the open. Lay mines or trip wires. The problem is with the jank. This game is very buggy. Detected causing environmental death, then reloaded to not be detected doing the same thing the same way. I try to get a box of stuff, but since it's on top of a designed cover area, I can't. Janked up, stuck animations. Some traditional pathing bugs. Look how smooth my guy mounts this MG. When turning off a light switch, the guard will take notice, eventually, walk over, and turn the switch back on. Now he does this the first time. The second time, he glitches through the wall to turn it off. I admit, this one made me laugh. Fighting inside buildings is super wonky. Pathing problems come into play. The enemies know where you are, but they can't get inside. The enemies inside have their brains implode, not knowing what to do. Even trying to lower large masses of troops out results in pathing derp. There are dozens of bugs I didn't catch on recording, but you get the point. The game seems to have a history of some gnarly bugs like characters being unable to shoot. You can be wounded in the hand, preventing the use of two-handed weapons, but it seemed like there was an actual bug preventing characters from shooting normally. The developers seem to have abandoned the game that could still use a very hearty bug fix. Conclusion Is Partisans 1941 a good game? Meh. I'm trying to keep these either yes or no. This is one I would otherwise give middle of the road since I did mostly enjoy it in lieu of bugs and playing it purely as a Slavic slasher flick. Yes, there is fun to be had. The combat does give you a series of options despite most of them being RP rather than practical. We still have another four years of the war. If the devs decided on a sequel, I would consider playing that since I got about 20 hours out of this one. The problem comes with recommending the game. This game needs a modest bug fix patch. It's not popular enough to get the fans to do it like a Bethesda game. They are prevalent enough in a 20-40 minute mission that you literally have to save scum or else you'll lose the will to continue. There's a bonus mission pack that is more of a modifier challenge mode. The challenge modes really aren't my thing, so I didn't partake for very long. Combat does become tedious. Sit in the bushes, avoid or stab the German. If in a firefight, toss a grenade and try to mow everybody down who flees. The combat doesn't feel like a team game as one character can solo an entire map due to wonky stealth. On the positive side, Insanely fast loading times, having the German and Russian speak native languages and not English with a cheesy accent with a great touch. Every mission is varied in scope and objectives. Areas don't feel too samey. Combat is simplistic enough to be enjoyable initially. The light base building mechanics accomplish the intended purpose. The characters are fleshed out enough to feel like actual people. So I would say, if you're into top-down stealth genre, like the old Commandos game, it's worth a consideration during a sale.